early on when I first watched him play basketball, my expectation for him to be like me was there. There's a lot of things that come into play of who he's going to be as a basketball player. Sayer Wing, born February 4th, 2002. Being a celebrity kid can be a wonderful experience, I guess, where the only life you know is everyone being nice to you, all doors opening up before you even get to them, and most the world waiting on you hand and feet. Sounds like a pretty smooth experience. When your famous parent just so happens to be one of the 75 greatest basketball players ever though, it could come with a few bumps in the road if you decide to follow his same footsteps. One of the biggest bumps, expectations. It's a gift and a curse specifically in basketball because on one hand, you'll be sure to have all the opportunities in the world, deserving or not, but at the same time an almost impossible challenge of living up to what your parent did. The higher caliber player your parent was, the more expectations for you to be just like them reach their physical benchmarks and achieve somewhere close to or at least respectable to what they did. But most would settle for and be satisfied if at least he makes it to the highest level and checks that off the list. History has shown us that the best players ever have yet to produce an offspring that can be as good or better than their parent was, unless it's baseball and the Griffies. Sure you have your Steph Curry, Andrew Wiggins, Devin Booker, Darius Garlands, whose fathers played in the league but were certainly not star players like their sons turned out to be, but none bred yet matching their superstar dad. Today's feature is making the attempt as his famous father is none other than Dwayne Wade, the greatest shooting guard I've ever seen behind Michael and Kobe. Wade was a different beast that changed the game with his deceptively quick first step, long strides, the way he split defenses into an acrobatic finish or patented mid-range pump fake pull up and also the Euro step he didn't invent but made it his own version with his slow speed, wide steps and incredible contortion ability. What I liked most that Wade had of a few things you can't teach was he was a competitor's competitor and had great height for his playstyle. Wade was smooth, fierce, a winner, defender, leader, and had a chip on his shoulder he managed to carry even when he was the best two guard in the world and maybe still does after a Hall of Fame career and top 75 ever selection. Try living up to that. For Zaire Wade, the chances were slim to none to be able to, and as of March 23, 2002, he was waived by his G League team after averaging less than 2 points a game, 26% from the field, 18% from 3, 1 assist, and shooting mid-60 from the free throw line. He was last seen apparently working out for the San Antonio Spurs, which shocked many that feel if the name on the back of the jersey wasn't Wade, he wouldn't be close to the opportunities he's afforded. What happened to Zaire Wade? A guard that had some potential in high school, but maybe much more hype than anything because of his basketball legend father. Here are three reasons Zaire Wade's growth was stunted. It's your boy JC stunted growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. You can also send a super thanks by clicking the button below. Enjoy the video. Sayer Wade is a 6'3 point guard born in Chicago, Illinois that since he picked up a basketball, he had expectations of being next in the family line. He played his freshman year at Mount Carmel High School, then American Heritage as a sophomore and junior, before transferring out west to loaded Sierra Canyon to play with LeBron's son Bronny James and some of the best players on the coast for his senior season. At this point, Zaire wasn't a highly ranked player, but followed and documented like he was, so was experiencing a bit of nepotism early on. For what was supposed to be his final year, he rode the bench for Sierra before being taken out of school prematurely because his father had problems with the coach who wasn't playing his son more than garbage time in an all-important final year. Sayer reclassifies and attends Brewster Academy, somewhere he could still play and it worked wonders for him as he began to receive serious offers from Division I schools like South Carolina, Rhode Island and Toledo. He decided to forgo those opportunities and turn pro instead. 
Stunt number one, not playing at a smaller school. In my opinion, Zaire Wade should have played at a lower level high school and not run behind the celebrity life in LA just to say you played for Sierra. It could have served him much better at a school he was the man at and got much more opportunity to develop his game on the floor because that's his main issue now in 2022. He just seems underdeveloped among other things. His body is finally entering its man stage as before physically he was worlds away from his dad and also levels below the physical development of top high school players of his era. A smaller school where he played almost the entire game, got to bang on the floor, expectations on his shoulder, could have sped up his development, also created an even bigger aura around him should he play well than there already was. Thing is, his hype solely came from D. Wade, as no one would be talking about him since high school otherwise. He rarely played at Sierra, and just watched as better, more developed players ate most of the time and the development opportunities. Stunt number two, not going the college route. As if someone was behind the scenes providing D. Wade with alternative stats. Or the saying that greatness isn't good at finding more greatness in others is true. Because for some reason, Zaire was advised to skip the college step and turn pro right away. This hurt Zaire in my opinion drastically because he was clearly not ready, although potential was there as he kinda reminds me of Brandon Jennings just sorely more inexperienced at the same age and not nearly as skilled, mainly because he wasn't allowed to slow down and take the necessary steps to be ready when he turned pro, not turn pro then get ready. In both stunt number one and two, being D. Wade's son, it wouldn't have affected him much where he went to college. All he had to do was put up the necessary stats and he would have been a shoe in NBA draft pick. Let's say Zaire went to a school like an HBCU or TCU, Rhode Island, maybe UC Santa Barbara and averaged 18 to 20 points or more at any point in those four years. There's no way with Dwayne Wade's influence, NBA team ownership, and behind the scenes string pulling, young Wade wouldn't have been chosen by at least one team in the second round. All he had to do was give them a reason. It's hard to do that when you're advised to jump to a level with other pro players right on the cusp of a call up. It makes me feel like every step of the way, D. Wade cared more about how things looked for his son rather than a strategy that worked best. From playing at a powerhouse like Sierra, when anyone could have seen he wouldn't play much, but for D. Wade, the whole Bronny and Zaire together giving a flashback image of he and LeBron was too good a headline to pass up. Nowadays, kids are taking all these alternative routes to the league and that looks good too. Only again, Stevie Wonder could see Zaire should have went to a small D1 school where he could get buckets and develop his other skills for two to four years, making him ready when an inevitable pro chance came. Even playing on the Bronny thing, he could have left college with Bronny and created even more hype. Going pro right away was a huge growth stunt that has him where he is now. Stunt number three is not yet ready for an NBA shot. Before the 2022 NBA Draft, even though he was waived by the Utah Jazz G League affiliate, his father still had enough juice to get him NBA team workouts leading up to the big day. In another delusional moment, Wade captions a photo and posts it as if Zaire was a green room invite and didn't just average close to nothing in the G League and showed if anything he wasn't quite ready for even that level. How is one to think he'd be of any help to an NBA team? But at this point, having not gone the small school route in high school and college, not even attempting in college, the only chance Zaire Wade plays in the NBA will be 100% because of his father's name. He's not ready for the NBA, and it's a bit puzzling because the road was so clear. I get how fathers can be ultra biased about their kids, but you wish someone else had control of Zaire Wade's career that could tell him the truth about him missing key steps that will leave him wearing all the pro gear he wants, but not being ready to compete with the best in the world. All in all, I was never high on Zaire Wade, 
even though he shows glimpses he can play. But at this point, there's so much he needs to work on that D-Wade working a way to get him in the NBA will only expose that fact. His G League stats speak volumes. He rarely went and finished right, didn't shoot, pass, rebound, defend, or anything well, and just may be past his window of gaining the development he needs while a small pro chance is still there. He's only 20 years old, so who knows what happens, but for these reasons, his growth is being stunted. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.